Good day, Victory Fellowship members. Langelise u balandel betu le la ben konza se victory. We thank God for an opportunity to minister once again. Siya bonga inko sungo kusnigeza ituba logo tisiya belani lani namtange. We also appreciate all everyone. Who is following us via live stream? Wherever you are, in this part of the world, God is good that we can connect in this manner. Fellowship together and partake of His word in such a time of need. Let us pray together as we begin. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for this time that you have created. Thank you for your word that is alive. Thank you for your word that speaks to every situation, speaks to every heart, Lord, in spite of our geographical location. We pray right now, Lord, that as we speak your word together with my brother, thank you, Father, for touching us, Lord, causing a flaw and a blending, and that above all, your spirit will speak through us, the mind of God, in the name of Jesus. Bless every heart, bless every ear. Thank you, Lord, for understanding and edification that comes to your people today. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen. 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 Our main two scriptural reading today is from Isaiah 42, verse 18 to 21. And then we will also read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Tying up these two scriptures together, this gives us the grace to build on the theme that we are building on as a church. We are saying, look, see, hear, and take it to heart. Surely in the times that we are living in, there is so many things that are happening. And sometimes we wonder if God is speaking at all. The text of my message is God will not keep silent. Psalms 50 verse 3. And whenever God spoke as if he was condemning us, his intention is to bring us to a place of conviction. He is not testifying against us. He in a manner of wanting to destroy. But he is speaking so that it brings repentance. Because him, the Lord, is well pleased for his righteousness. Sake. The righteousness of his people that derive from him. Because no one is righteous except the Lord. And therefore, the Bible says, we need to take heed to the things we have heard. How many sermons have you heard? How many much words of wisdom. How much counsel from scripture. Are we taking heed? Now the Bible says we should take heed to this things. Take heed to the scriptures lest we drift away. Drifting away simply means you may think you are standing but without realizing beginning to drift bit by bit because of the winds and the circumstances that surround you. And so the word of the Lord where we read in Hebrews 2, it says the word of God was spoken by angels and it remained steadfast after this day. And even those angels that disobeyed God were, were judged. Then the Bible gives us a challenge. How can we escape 
There is so many things that we need to escape from right now. In this time that we are living in, we are living in dangerous times. There's too many theories, opinions, speculations of men without the perception in the realm of the spirit. Without an understanding what the word of the Lord says about our time. Certain things are coming to Pass. Because they are already written in the scripture. Because the Lord says the Lord will uplift his word. He will exalt his word. It doesn't matter what happens to you and I. But the word of the Lord shall remain to be true. Right through all seasons. In our time, we have so many describers of the pandemic and its effects and possible ways of coming out of it. There so many subscribers to those that are told certain things via the media. There are so many voices. But here is a question today. Are we discerning the Lord's will in such a challenging season? If you and I would not take heed to the word of the Lord unbeknown to ourselves we may be reduced to fortune tellers instead of forth telling God's truthful word. The Lord is word pleased for his righteousness sake. He will exalt the law. He will exalt his word. His voice shall be exalted. He will make it honorable. God will not be silent. He will speak we have heard of times in the past that were said to be dark ages. We are probably even is no records about God. Speaking to man. But I want to tell you today, as I submit this to you, God is not silent. In this season, God cannot be made to be quiet. Whatever you look around you, He will grant wisdom unto those that will pay attention and hear His word. Much was said last week about learning by listening and much more listening to his word. But further today, I'm building on by saying men such as Daniel who rose to prominence in challenging times because they feared God. They functioned with revelation. Actually, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 to 22, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are in his people. Now, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 to 22, he changes the time and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that have no understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is darkness because light dwells with him. You and I in this time we choose to dwell with the Lord. The Bible says light dwells with him. He knows what is in the darkness. He knows what is hidden. He knows what 
Where is God in all this? God comes back to you and I. He says, where are you? He is challenging you to watch out for your spiritual state. Because what matters about you is not just a natural thing, but it is about your spiritual life. Tell you what, even if you are to leave or to die, your spiritual state matters the most to God. Because your eternity is invested in your spiritual state. Therefore, diseases Wars, calamity, persecution will not silence God. He continues to speak to us. in these last days, through His Son Jesus, through His Word, through the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of the purchased possession of our inheritance? life God will speak through nature. Even world events sometimes are allowed by God to fulfill scripture. So you and I, if God is not silent, do not be silent. During Jesus' time, they tried to silence those that were praising him, Hosanna. 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 And Jesus said unto them, if you allow if you do not allow them to worship me, if you want these to keep silent, the stones will immediately cry out and worship me because I am God. Listen, child of God, God is not silent right now. You and I should not be silenced by situations, but we should rise up and hear what he is saying. Bless him all the time. Like our praise, our worship, shall fill our mouth. That if we don't understand, we may seek him, we may require of him, we may hear him, so that he delivers us from all our fears. In order to adapt and handle all the unpredictable times, we need to constantly hear from God. How we handle this time determines our harvest and promotion. promotion after the pandemic is over. Therefore, take responsibility. Be faithful in your life to your family. Be faithful with what is entrusted to you. Be faithful to the word of the Lord. Stay true because the Bible says in the book of Chronicles the eyes of the Lord run to and from over the whole earth 
God will not keep silent. More so when our ears are itching to hear what we want to hear. God is interested in your eyes. In what you see. That's why he gave you two eyes. He is interested in your hearing. Hence he gave you two ears. He is interested in your walk with him. That's why he he gave you two feet. He is interested in the work of your hands. That's why he gave, he gave us two hands. Wow, so that we wow. may be complete. I believe to a certain extent God slows us down or has slowed us down from the hustle and the bustle of life to get our attention. Right now the whole world is on a standstill. God will use situations to advance his purpose because he has a final say in my life, in his life, in your life, and even those that are threatening you. He has a final say. So don't be afraid of that. Because God is the one who has the final say. What the enemy meant for evil, God turns it for his good. Let's just build this message now by giving you these points. First of all, God speaks to us through his son. We read that from Hebrews chapter 2. Who is his son? Who is his son? His name is Jesus Christ. Born of the virgin Mary. Who came and preached the kingdom of God. And anointed and commissioned you and I. To to preach the same message of the kingdom. Even if in our time. Nations may rage. People may plot a vein. The kings of the earth. Can set themselves and turn counsel together. Some of the counsel may be working against the church. Saying, saying, let us break their bonds and cast away their cords. I like verse 4. We attend to verse 4. Some to say, He who sits in the heavens. He shall laugh. Uh, can you imagine? Laughing at the vanity of a man's plot. As long as something is plotted of man and he has no God agenda, kingdom agenda, he who sits in the heavens who has a final say to every soul and every man, he shall laugh and say, what are you doing? What are you attempting? The only wisest thing 
That men need to do. That you and I that are called by his name is to continue to testify that there is salvation in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Let me tell you something. There's many gospels out there but some of the gospels are not centered on Jesus Christ. Therefore, people are not hearing from God because they are listening to another gospel. It is almost like what Paul said to the Galatians who has bewitched you. I presented the true gospel but you turned to fables. Hebrews 1 God who at various times in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets held in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus for it is the power of God unto salvation child of God do not be ashamed of the gospel even if the world can love and say where is your God but he has called us by his name he is the son of the living God he is the son of the Pay attention. Let's go into the scriptures. If you want to understand more about the characteristics of the end times, don't just listen to writers of theories and, and predictors. Go into the word. God does not predict. But he speaks his mind and his, his heart. It is that voice that spoke that day to Peter and John on the mountain of transfiguration when God himself said this is my beloved son I am well pleased hear him listen to him I'm speaking to you and I. If God is speaking to you and I, through his son, the salvation, repentance, turning to him, him confounding the wise, so that his word stands forever. Even when the heaven and earth will pass away. But in the midst of all that, Jesus said, words of comfort, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. I say to you, you are my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. And I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of the world. In the middle of the fears of the pandemic. People may be afraid of dying. But if you have Christ in you. You do not fear death because he conquered the grave. You can live because Jesus lives. So he says, if you believe in me, if you follow me, you shall never perish. This perish here is eternal separation with God. I wonder if you have made it right with Jesus in your life. Is he the Lord of your life right now? If not, I'm speaking to you. See 
Bona. That you do not refuse him who is speaking to you. You are not born again. You need Jesus. You are in doubt. You need Jesus. You are fearful of the pandemic. You need Jesus. You do not know what tomorrow holds. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. For he said, I know the plans that I think about you. I will give you a future and a hope. We shall only escape these things if we run to Jesus. Whose voice shook the earth. It is only God who can shake the earth. We think an earthquake is a big thing. But an earthquake is just but a sign that there is somebody who, who is bigger than an earthquake who will not only shake one area. Recently I heard somewhere in the eastern part of our country there was an earth tremor. And there were just an earth tremor. Many had to record. Many had to investigate. I remember some years ago, sort of an, an earth tremor in Pulawayo. And my uncle, my own uncle, said when, I, when that happened, I felt my bed shaking under me. It was in the middle of the night. But the shaking of the bed was so severe. Because even the windows of the house were rattling. And then he says, this is what I like. He says, I climbed down, I, I climbed off my bed and prayed. He is shaking. The earth. A bigger shaking than that is coming. God will speak to us by His Spirit. He will speak to us. You cannot hear the voice of the Holy Spirit unless you have developed a relationship with Him. The Holy Spirit is not just a force. He is not the one who we call upon just saying fire, fire. But the Holy Spirit is in the person of God. He is God himself. He speaks. He instructs. He leads us. The Bible says he is our guarantee of all the promises of God. Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will send you another help the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who shall be with you until the end of the time. Oh, I love the Holy Spirit. As the Bible says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither is it entered into the heart of men, the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Now, think of your physical ear. Think of your own spirit. Now, there's many things that we hear that we read from the word. But is it all? The Bible further says there are those things that God has prepared for those that love him. Interestingly, it says in verse 10, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit of God searches all things. Yes. Deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man 
Except the spirit of the man that is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. God. Oh, I love you, Holy Spirit. How we need you in this time to be our comfort, to be our helper, to be our advocate, to remind us of the things that were spoken by the Lord so that we are strengthened in the inner person because this is what the Holy Spirit does. He strengthens your inner person so that when we speak we don't just speak our own thoughts we speak the mind of God we speak the heart of God so that when revelation comes we cannot just take it as our own interpretation but we will know that this is the Holy Spirit speaking can he speak and tell us tell us about the challenging times yes he will Acts 11 let's see an example it says then in those days prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch then one of them named, named Akabas stood up and showed by the spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout the world. Then the disciples, each according to his own ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. You see, the church was prepared. And they became proactive. Because God spoke in advance. There were men and women who were in relationship with the Holy Spirit. You could hear what God is saying. How I long that I be a man led of the Spirit who even when my faculties are saying this when predictors are saying this and the Holy Spirit will speak a word in season that will sustain us for the time we live in and the times to come for this end time church as we see in the book of Revelation, a sense of agency and emphasis says that he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit is to the churches now let me speak to you and I what is the Spirit of God saying to you right now about the situation that you are in? Are you feeling slowed down? Are you feeling limited? Is it by your choice? Largely right now, it's not, it's not our choices. But in the midst of all that, what is the Holy Spirit saying? Mm. Holy Spirit. Let me cover the last part of this what message. How shall we sharpen our ability to hear from God? Because our ability to hear is enhanced by our relationship and our trust in the Lord. Not once in a while, but always going back to the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 17, verse 7 and 8, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots 
Find the river. Let me add there. And say the Holy Spirit is also likened to be like a river. A river. A flowing river. A mighty river. Your roots need to be planted in the river of God. In the person of the Holy Spirit. Because when He is in you, the Holy Ghost he gives you boldness. Finishing that verse, it says, We will not fear when it comes. We will not fear when the pandemic is raging. Our businesses, our work shall not dry away. But God will make a plan. Even after lockdown. Then he says, and we will not be anxious in the season of drought. Neither are we going to seize yielding fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is not silent. If you and I will hear God in this time, I have said, let's listen to Jesus. His message of salvation and forgiveness. Let's embrace the Holy Spirit who will always tell us about things to come. And God says amid his all tumult and confusion be still and know that I am God. Give attention to me. Stop your human efforts. Look to me. How much effort could those that were in the ark of Noah to try and help themselves except to stay in the ark till the waters subsided. I don't know what God is saying to you right now. But I sense deep in my heart if you are not in the ark if you are not in the Lord Jesus Christ these turbulent times around us will leave certain people in a very disastrous place. Unless they run to the Lord. Unless they run to the ark. His name is Jesus. Come behold the works of God. Psalms 46. Who has made desolations in the earth? He makes war cease. He makes war cease. To the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and casts the spear into you. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Let me give you five things. Because I have already said God is not silent but you need to take a particular position if you are to hear him. Number one how is your daily discipline with God? We have historical called just the quiet time. A quiet time. When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing that you do? Has your quiet time been been silenced by the enemy. Been silenced by the needs around you. Silenced by the situation around you. If you are going to hear God right now. Count your 
motivate once again. When I was the discipline of the quiet time. This has sustained me. Through all the ages in my Christian walk. Having quiet time. Sitting in the presence of God. Reading his word. Hearing his thoughts. Ah, how great is the sum of them every morning and he speaks to my heart he encourages my spirit before I hear the news of the day my spirit is already uplifted by the word of God Isaiah 50 verse 4 says that the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is is weary there is many people that are weary right now but it takes people that will have a quality time with God every day so that they will be given a word to speak to the weary it awakens me morning by morning it awakens my ear to hear as the learned the Lord has opened my ear May the Lord open your ear when you choose every morning or every part of the day, three times a day, five times a day, give yourself time to be quiet before God. Why? Because there is a spirit in you. And it is the breath of the Almighty that will give you understanding. This is what Job said. After all the troubles, he understood that there is a spirit in me. Oh, that is yearning. Yearning for the understanding from God. Number two, the discipline of seeking God early. Some people wake up any time of the day. Just any time. They don't worry what has happened outside. Who is saying what? But for as long as they have woken up. But David says in Psalm 73, Oh my God, early will I seek you, my soul thirst for you, my flesh wants for you, in a triumphless love, when there is no water, when I remember you, on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. When was the last time you woke up early? 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to seek after God about your situation. When was the last time you woke up in the middle of the night and prayed? David says, I meditate on you in the night watches. The night has four watches. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., 9 p.m. to midnight, midnight to 3 a.m., 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Now, if you cannot, now, when I was at any point, watch in this night, there's a secret about the early hours. The in this night, when I was at any point, watch in this night, there's a secret about the Morning. The night watches. In the deadness of the night, there is a stillness that brings comfort, revelation, answers to your spirit. Tell you what? Sometimes. Some, God will make us desperate somehow. so that we can. Rise up early. Rise up in the middle of the night and call upon him. The morning is the womb of the day. Men and women who exercise dominion in prayer, in Bible reading, 
In the declaration of the word, Lord, they are day with blessings, with the word of yes, God, so with yes, the power of God. God. Every day, child of God, is like a blank check. If you don't wake up and you command the morning and you take charge of the day, you speak into the day, the enemy has already programmed it for you. Oh, Oh, have you commanded, have we you prayed about that situation early in the morning? Have you prayed for your husband or for your wife while they are sleeping? Have you prayed for your children in the early hours of the night, in the night watches while they are sleeping? Have you presented your business idea in the middle of the night and say, Lord, I I take hold of the powers of darkness and I break them over my resources, over my capital. I release it that as the morning comes, I receive my joy. Have you gotten hold of God in the hours of the morning? Tell you what? Know that God cannot do it for you. He can do it for you. But how determined are you? How serious are you? Some things we should be willing to sacrifice to fight for them as if it were but of course we don't fight the battles that God fights. It's just to seek him early. Remember, a man is belly will be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. With the harvest of his lips, he shall be Number three, the discipline of waiting in his presence. Oh, how I love to wait. Psalms 27, 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. And wait for the Lord. Psalms 37, 7. Psalms 37, 7. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of evil doers. God knows you. You can only hear from God. When you can wait in his presence. Number four. The discipline of fasting and prayer. I know we spend the whole day in our homes enjoying all kinds of produce we're small with the millies uh, from the good harvest that is expected this year but do you think about taking a day to fast let me challenge you Jesus said to them in Matthew 9.15 can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them but the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and they will fast in those days ah, could it be these days oh, but can we fast and seek him can we give a day as a sacrifice unto the Lord and say, Lord, I discipline my flesh. I don't want to rely on my own understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. Oh, Lord, we need you. In this time, speak to us when we fast and pray. Acts 27, verse 9 to 11. Paul is speaking in this trip Men, I perceive that this voyage, this voyage will end with disaster and much loss. And as they had fasted in this trip, not deliberately, 
But because they were afraid, the Bible says after long abstinence from food, those who stood in the midst of them and and said, what? Man, you should have listened to me. You should not have saved from Crete. And incurred this disaster and loss. Now I urge you take to heart although there will be no loss of life among you but only the ship for there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord to whom I belong whom I serve saying do not be afraid, Paul. Paul. You must indeed stand before Caesar. God has granted you all those who stayed with you. The lives of those men were spared because of Paul's prayers, because of Paul's relationship with God. God spared the lives of those men because Paul prayed through fasting therefore take take to heart for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me saints God will not keep silence there is many things that are happening around us there's many voices. But tonight, today as we conclude, I would want us to declare the voice of the Lord, the word of the Lord over the situations that surround us, over the pandemic that is around us, over the disturbing voices Take your Bible with you right now. As we conclude, Psalm 29, Psalm 29, verse 3. Verse 3. The voice of the Lord is, is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. He is not silent. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord set us. Oh, he makes them also skip like a calf. Like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flame. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the deer to give birth. The voice of the Lord is over the pandemic. God remains that I am the healer. Look to me. I am the healer. The Lord is enthroned. He will give strength to his people. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that you will not keep silent. And today as we pray, concluding this message, we are aware that you are talking. You are calling for every man from all walks of life, those that are not born again particularly, to make right with you. And right now I challenge you and I speak to you. If you are not born again, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I confess all my sins. 
I come today surrendering my life and all my fears about what is happening. I tune my ear to hear your voice, your voice of salvation, your voice of healing, your voice of seeking after you, your voice of waiting in your presence. Lord, touch my life today. Change me that I will serve you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for delivering me and for forgiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you as we have heard this word. Now, Buy a Bible if you don't have one. Read your Bible every day. Allow the thoughts of God to speak to you because God is not silent. God bless you.